Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm so sorry that I did not get this review done within the month of December. Today is January 1st of 2021. Can you believe 2021 is here? What in the world? Uh, I finally finished, <laughs> after struggling with this book for like three weeks, I finally finished the 170 page long special special edition, excuse me, of Goosebumps Most Wanted, The Twelve Screams of Christmas. Now mind you, I like the cover. I love this haunted house back here. Somebody else in a review on Goodreads pointed out this idea that that mansion looks a lot like the same one from The Haunter and Zombie Halloween, which... Alright, 12 Screams of Christmas. Took me three weeks to read. I've almost never taken three weeks to read a Goosebumps book. I don't think I've ever taken that long. This was totally not something I liked that much. I have to be honest with you. I had a hard time dedicating time throughout my very busy schedule of the month of December, working on my other channels that I have on YouTube, to get time to work on reading this, because I just didn't want to make much time for it. I'm sad to say that. I really am sad to say that. I think there's a little bit of a burnout going on with me right now, with Goosebumps. I just kind of want to take some time, take a step back, uh, maybe for a month or two. You know, my channel anniversary for the two-year anniversary of the channel is not until, I believe, February 28th. So I might take a break until then. Just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Um, 12 Screams of Christmas is not really what I wanted it to be. Uh, I'm very surprised. Last year, around 2019, yeah, the, the Christmas of 2019, I tried to start reading this and get a review out at that time. The whole Copa thing happened here on YouTube, so I kind of backed away from it and was like, ah, I'll come back to it at some point if YouTube survived. And it did, so I'm here. Uh, <laughs> Happy New Year, by the way. It's 2021, once again. I just, I don't know what it was with this book. Did anybody else out there read this book and just feel kind of put off by it? I, I don't know. I just, I couldn't get into it. I, I genuinely could not get into this. And I don't necessarily think this is a burnout symptom because I was fine with Beware of the Snowman, the old classic series book. I really, really loved that. Um, Legend of the Lost Legend, sort of kind of a Christmas book. Really dug that a lot too. Had a really good positive review for both of those books right before I reviewed this. Um, I don't think there was just a want to take a break from being burnt out. I think it was genuinely, the book was just a bad book, a bad Goosebumps book. And I hate to feel that way. I've had so many people out there recommend this to me and want me to review it. I don't want to insult any of you guys, so please take this with a grain of salt. If many of you out there are questioning to read this book based on my opinion, don't take my opinion as the firm basis you should go with. I'm telling you, most people seem to like this book a lot more than I did that read it. Um, it's one of those rare occurrences where I just don't agree. I'm, I'm not trying to be a contrarian. I just I don't know. I just didn't like 12 Screams of Christmas all that much. Now, do I think it's extremely creative in some ways? Absolutely. It's just not super entertaining. The book is 170 pages, uh, 174, I think, and it feels so bloated <laughs> for a Goosebumps book. Goosebumps books, especially in the special edition books, which are a little bit longer than most of Goosebumps series in general, I kind of thought this would be as well-paced as something like Zombie Halloween. Zombie Halloween's fantastic. The Haunter is kind of a mixed bag, but it's mostly good, has decent pacing to it. Kind of changes tone about halfway through the book. I really think that's the most problematic issue with that whole book. Um, this has a prologue, very much like most of the special edition books, and the prologue is pretty good, pretty entertaining. Uh, essentially, there's a new family in the 1800s that move into a kind of an older house, or maybe it's a newer house, something like that. It's, it's an older kind of house, and there's a well in the backyard. And when the brothers and their younger sister are playing out there, or I think it's the older sister, it's something like that. Her name is Flora. When they're playing out in the yard, the sister is dancing on the walls of the well, and she slips and falls into the well, and the family has to try to get her out, and you never really find out if she died or what happened there. Then we come to present day in the story, and there is our main character girl, <laughs> And she, I think her name is Kate, I don't know, Goosebumps characters, they, they, they don't really have the biggest persona ever. Carly Beth is about as good as you get, and she's great. Um, our main character girl really wants to win this part in this play called 12, 12 Screams of Christmas. It's kind of a musical play that her music teacher, Mr. Piccolo, is going to write and direct and everything else. And she wants to beat out this other girl named Courtney, who's really mean to her, has given her like a horrible nickname called Ghost Girl, because she claims, the main character claims, that at some point in the past, she saw a ghost that turned out to be a paper bag or something like that. Our main character apparently does see ghosts, though. There's some really good scenes in here involving, for example, a graveyard. Very early in the book, 
and that graveyard scene is really creepy. I really like that. Um, she is very much a loner. She has like a friend or two, but they're not really in the book. It's not your typical Goosebumps book of a main character with some surrounding side character people that add some kind of bickering or bantering into the book that make it fun. It's not like that. It's literally just her isolated most of the time by herself. And I don't know how much that worked. I don't know how many Goosebumps books I think off, off the top of my head that are like that. I think most of them have a supporting cast that really help bring some kind of element of humor or scare tactic or tension or something like that. This book, not so much. I was kind of surprised by that. So yeah, that's something different for most Goosebumps books. Uh, I don't know, Stein could be trying something new. I don't know. But uh, essentially, this teacher decides that the class needs to rehearse this play one weekend in a haunted house to really get that atmosphere of that creepy feel they're going, instead of doing the 12 days of Christmas, they're doing the 12 screams of Christmas, which is the title of the book and the title of the story that they're singing, musically, whatever, for their little play at school. And I thought, okay, that's an interesting premise. We could do something really cool with that. It takes like 80 pages to get to that house. <laughs> it takes almost a hundred pages of this book to get to the house itself that's supposedly haunted, um, that may or may not, which kind of is just saying yes it is, because it's a shorter book, it is the house that was from the prologue. Is it haunted? We don't really know. Our main character suspects it might be. Now, of course, this is spoiler-free, so I won't get into too much, but I will tell you some things about the book that I do really, really like, scene-wise. Of course, I talked about the cemetery scene. I think that's really, really good. Really enjoyed that. Very eerie. Just something about the atmosphere in that scene that brought something to this book. Then there's a scene involving Father Christmas. If you've read the book, and many of you have that watch these videos and have recommended this book to me over and over again, the Father Christmas scene was so great and so horrific, <laughs> in like the worst, in, in like the best possible way, which is also the worst possible way. Um, the Father Christmas scene, I will not tell you a thing about it. If you haven't read the book, I'm not going to ruin that for you because that's a great treat. If you make it through like 150 pages of this 170 page book, you'll get there. You'll probably love that. The ending is really goofy. I, th this is a common thing with Goosebumps. I can almost get over it. But I think overall this is a boring book. You know, if it was cut down to the typical 120 or so, 130 or so page book that Goosebumps typically is, some are even like 110 pages sometimes. If it was that short, I think that would have benefited this book immensely. Now, there was clearly a contract here that said Stein had to have like three or four special edition books, which are like 170 pages, like I said, instead of the typical 110 to 130 page books. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. As long as the book is good, I could care less. This book is so just slow and dull. It doesn't have much happening to it, except for, again, the cemetery scene and the horrific Father Christmas scene. Are those two scenes worth reading this big old book for? When I say big old book, most people that read big old science fiction and fantasy novels probably roll in their eyes right now. Uh, if I were there, I'd hope you pick your eyeballs up. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, for a Goosebumps book, for a younger reader themselves who might be reading this, is it really all that entertaining? Is it really all worth the money to put into this? I don't think so. I think I think most wanted special edition two, Scream, 12 Screams of Christmas. I, I'm really disappointed with it. Um, I'm disappointed that this has to be the last book I read for 2020, even though today's 2021 and I finally finished the book. Um, I'm thankful I've got it out of the way now. I'm thankful I get to start a little bit of a break before I get too burnt out and just stop for a while. <laughs> It's going to be nice having a little break, but I don't think that's the problem with why I didn't like this book. I really don't think that. I really don't think that if it was that, I think I would be more honest with you and tell you that. I don't think it's what it was. I think it was almost uneventful most of the time. I'm going to be fascinated looking at the comments after this review and seeing how many people roast me for not liking this book. Um, please don't be mean. Please don't be mean. I'm just saying that I would love to see what you guys have to say down in the comments. I want to know if anybody agrees with me about this book. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's one of those books like the first Monster Blood book that I just don't see the appeal. Now, even the rewriting of songs like 12, Screams of, or 12 Days of Christmas, which has turned into 12 Screams of Christmas in the book, I kind of think are cute a little bit. Um, there was another one in here. There's a song from Rudolph. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It wasn't Rudolph, but it was like... Was it Have a Holly Jolly Christmas? But it was like Have a Very Scary Christmas, something like that. The the rewritten lyrics to those songs in this version are actually very cool. I actually like those. 
it has almost this nightmare before Christmas, Halloween, Christmassy feel to it. You know, it kind of does, and I have to give it that. I like it in some respects, but overall, I, I can't sit here and say the book's a good book. I just, I can't. I'm being honest with you. I'm trying to help you out with saving some money in case you want to pick up all the stuff. With mo most of you guys are Goosebumps collectors, so you're not going to listen to me. But I'm just saying, I would not give my hopes up so high when I go to read this book, because Beware of the Snowman, if you think that's a great book, that's probably a better book for you versus this. Um, that's just my opinion on it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll change my mind one day. I don't know if I ever reread this. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, would I want to see a modern-day TV episode for the new show adaptation of this? Would I want to see that? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the Father Christmas scene. That would be phenomenal. I'd love that. Was it a little bit different from most Goosebumps books? Sort of, kind of. Uh, the pacing is the biggest issue for me, like I said. I won't repeat myself too much. It's probably already too long of a review anyway, but... Uh, Overall, I don't recommend it. It's definitely not the best Goosebumps Christmas book. I just, I'm really let down. I have to be honest with you. Anyway, when it comes to Goosebumps Most Wanted, The Twelve Screams of Christmas, again, this is special edition number two out of the Most Wanted franchise, Most Wanted was one of my favorite of the newer Goosebumps series that have been going on the last ten years or so. The series usually has a lot of blood to it. That's This book is oddly bloodless. Well, <laughs> the Father Christmas scene is not particularly bloody, but it's actually horrific to look at and, well, read, whatever. Um, it's not a bloody book, which kind of surprised me. You kind of expected more than that. But I really like the book. I, I think it has certain scenes that can work. If it was adapted to an episode, it could be really good. But the book itself, the pacing is the biggest issue here, and it completely drags its feet, like, all the time. I don't know, maybe I'm the only person on the planet that feels this way. It seems like some of the Goodreads reviews were kind of negative about it too, which kind of surprised me. I keep putting the book half over my face. I'm sorry if it's bothering you guys. It's bothering me seeing it. Uh, when it comes to 12 Screams of Christmas, if I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I would probably give this book like maybe a three out of five stars. The pacing is really off, has some good ideas, has a good premise, takes forever to get to that freaking haunted house story. I just, <laughs> what? Why? Uh, special edition contracts, terrible idea. Don't ever do it again, Stein. Because uh, you get most of the books being good, and then you have this special edition being rough. Extremely rough, in my opinion. Anyway, what are your guys' thoughts about this? Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? <laughs> are you disappointed in me? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Again, three out of five stars for me. It's a very weak book, but it's certainly not the worst. There is worse Goosebump stuff out there. Again, Monster Blood, I think, is worse than this. Uh, the comics from IDW that are not written by Stein are typically horrible, <laughs> typically unreadable garbage. Uh, there is worse Goosebump stuff out there. I'm trying to judge it fairly. If a 3 out of 5 seems higher than it should be to you, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Forgive me. I hope you had a wonderful Merry Christmas. Thank you guys so much for your support on the channel. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful 2021. I'm going to make one more video, kind of a little I'm going to take a break video after this so hopefully you'll tune in for that as well and uh, <laughs> thank you again god bless you guys happy new year and goodbye